this meeting, um, involved more than 160,000 women and found that there was actually quite a significant protective effect against heart disease. I spoke to Dr. Rahi Victory from Wayne State University in Detroit who carried out the research. It appears that many of the cardiovascular disease outcomes are actually decreased slightly or on average about 10% in women that have a history of oral contraceptive use. And for cancer, the data that we have supports the previous findings that endometrial and ovarian cancer are reduced in women with oral contraceptive use. It must be something to do with the hormones in the pill, for instance, estrogen that is having some protective effect. How does that work? Estrogen likely reduces the inflammation in the blood vessels. We know that it has an effect on a molecule called nitric oxide, which has to do with healing and integrity of the blood vessel, as well as having to do with um, stretching open the blood vessel, dilating the blood vessel, as we call it. So those are both beneficial molecular level events that occur in women that take estrogen that would contribute to preventing or improving the incidence of heart disease. Would you advise women who might be at risk of heart disease if they have a family history of it to take the pill as a preventive measure? I think every woman needs to speak with her physician, determine exactly what her risk factors are, and then consider using the oral contraceptive. Certainly it would appear from this data to support some benefit in decreasing risk. Having said that, there is good evidence to indicate that if you already have established cardiovascular disease and you are exposed to estrogens, you likely are going to incur an increase in adverse outcomes. Brian Victory speaking to Anya Lecturovis. Anya, so a very intense debate then on, on pros and cons of this contraceptive method. Absolutely, and it is extremely interesting. The study was huge. It really, and the science won the best prize here for the, for, for the best science. The research is actually very, very good. And it's opening more questions. What other effects could there be? And it certainly does seem to show that we don't know really that much about the pill, despite it being there for, what, 40 years now? Well, we'll soon find out. Anya Robis, thank you for joining us. And that was News Hour. For me, Elise Doucette, and the rest of the team, thank you for listening to this edition, and do tune in for more. BBC World Service, this is Martin Fuchs with the Sports News. First, let's get the latest football results and details from the European Champions League. Eight more group matches have just finished. John Myers can tell us what happened. PSV Eindhoven are the new leaders in Group E after a 2 1 win away to Rosenberg in Norway. The Dutch side are a point clear of Arsenal, who were held to a 2 2 draw away to Panathinaikos, despite twice taking the lead. The feature game in Group F failed to produce the goal feast that many were predicting, but an Andre Shevchenko goal gave AC Milan a vital 1 0 win over Barcelona to move the Italians three points clear of their Spanish rivals. Shakhtar Donetsk picked up their first points of the campaign with a 3-0 home win over Celtic, who've now lost all three of their matches. After a goalless first half in Spain, Inter Milan went on to thrash Valencia by five goals to one. They remain three points clear of Werder Bremen in Group G. The German side were 2-1 winners away to Anderlecht, leaving the Belgians still looking for their first point. And Chelsea are now five points clear in Group H after a 2-0 home win over CSKA Moscow. The goals from John Terry and Idaho Johnson. The defending champions Porter were beaten 2-0 away to Paris Saint-Germain. And that's the latest sports news from the BBC here in London. And with the news, I'm Dave Russell. The Swedish Prime Minister has just announced his cabinet reshuffle. Finance Minister Bossa Ringholm stands down to become Europe Persson's number two. Per Nuda takes the finance job. Thomas Bustros, who'd been widely tipped for the job, becomes the new industry minister, with the previous incumbent, Leif Bogrodsky, moving to education and culture. In a new move, Ibrahim Balin of Turkish descent becomes the first minister of the cabinet with a foreign background. He's the new minister for primary education. 
Integration Minister Mona Salim is moved to the Department for Social Infrastructure. The last cabinet reshuffle was in October 2002 when several ministers retired. Police in Lynn Sherping hunting for the killer of an eight-year-old boy on his way to school and a 56-year-old woman on her way to work are chasing up a number of leads. These include a hat which was found in a newspaper stand along the probable escape route that contained traces of blood. The hat is now being examined by forensic experts for traces of DNA. Police are also appealing for to the scene at the time of the killing on Tuesday morning to come forward and contact them. There are calls in Sweden for ferry companies to abandon their tradition of offering lorry drivers free beer and wine with their food on crossings after a drunken Hungarian truck driver ploughed into two cars on a motorway in Skorna, killing five people. The Scanline shipping company decided on Wednesday to change their rules for serving alcohol. Market leaders Nordo Link and Malmö will discuss the matter at their next management meeting later on in the month. On Wednesday night, one person was taken into custody, suspected of drunk driving, when the Melbourne police checked sobriety among 52 drivers at the Nordu terminal. The Swedish government is to intervene and try and help the Saab car plants in Trollhattan win a crucial contest with the Opel plants in Germany to produce mid-sized cars in the future and therefore ward off massive redundancies and possible closure. The State Secretary for Industry and Employment, Sven Söder, has said that while both the Swedish and German governments are prohibited by EU regulations from offering up subsidies, Sweden can invest more money in infrastructure, product research and development in order to convince owners General Motors to keep production in Trollhattan. However, Söder declined to say how much money the government would spend helping Saab and emphasised that it's up to the plant to ensure its own survival. Swedish Prime Minister Jürgen Hörsson plans to meet with GM's Europe executives in Switzerland on October the 29th to discuss the situation. Sweden will find out today if it's successfully defended its title in the Food Olympics in Germany. Master chefs from 36 countries are battling for gold, judged by a jury on preparation, nutritional value, degree of difficulty, harmony of the courses, artistic flair and, of course, taste. Over five days, over a thousand top cooks and pastry chefs have been whipping up their dishes to choose from. The competition began when a group of German chefs dreamed up the idea of an international melting pot, where kitchen wizards from around the world could share tips and trends across language and cultural barriers. In sport, Joachim Pimpin Johansson is through to the next round of Madrid Tennis Masters after a hard-fought 7-6, 7-5 victory over Argentinian clay court specialist Guillermo Canas. Roger Sertling and Jonas Bjergman failed to reach the second round.